let this meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Douglas County Transportation Committee uh, as of what? January 21st, 2020 come to order. We'll start with our normal um, going around the room to identify everybody that's in the meeting as members. I'm Kelly Robinson, the Chairman of this committee and Vice Chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. To my right. Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theriel, Assistant to Mark Teal. Daniel Cherry Hoover, the Collaborative Jamal Shepard, Transportation Coordinator. Miguel Valentin, Transportation Director. Jerry Watson, Commit Douglas Transit Services Director. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and the Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Very good. Welcome to all y'all. Um, this is our first meeting of the year, I believe. So Miguel, we've got we've got a full schedule, so let's let's hit. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item uh, the first order of business yeah. is the approval of the minutes and in the published agenda I had December 17th, 2019 meeting. There is also the minutes for the December 4th special poll meeting that uh, have been circulated yeah. and both of those could be adopted. Okay. Um, call for a motion um, to adopt the meeting minutes of, of the 4th and the 17th of December, 2019. So, Sorry. In discussion. Madam Administrator, are you okay with adopting both at the same time? Yes, sir. All right. We got a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Director of the team, motion okay. carries. Okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you. First item on the agenda is a report from Transit Service by the collaborative firm. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello and good afternoon. And again, Daniel Cherry Hoover with the Collaborative Firm. Um, we're already queued up and ready to go. Thank you again, Jessica. So we have been uh, busy over the past 30 days. We wanted to end the year um, on a high note, and I think we, we made some great strides and made some progress already into 2020. Um, so ongoing activities, there are still scheduled advertisements. So Chapel Hill News and Views and Hometown Advantage. Uh, those are uh, setting consistent. But for 2020, what we are looking into is just uh, targeted uh, messaging for 2020. So we had a lot of visibility. We had a lot of educational um, uh, ads. And now for 2020, they're not only being targeted, but how can we best utilize the dollar um, in the most effective way on the ad side? And sometimes that means downsizing ads and using them specifically for um, sp uh, targeted messages, not just fixed route, but other transit service messaging, such as Vancouver. So uh, ads will continue um, the next beginning February to April. So the one month that we had off was January, but it wrapped around from the last ad from December into January. So there are the two ads that were most recent um, in Chapel Hill News and Views, um, which you may have seen on the back cover, and you may recognize this wonderful, handsome person right there. Um, that is Mr. Jamal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the free rides um, through January 1 was in Hometown Advantage, so that added to the visibility of that message. Mm -hmm. Other ongoing uh, and completed uh, scheduled advertisements, uh, Douglas County Sentinel. So the four weeks from the last time we spoke, there was one additional ad. So those ads ran the 7th, 10th, 17th, and 21st. Again, mimicking the free rides, visibility, and connect Douglas information. The collateral was throughout December as well, since last we met, um, continued into the full month of December, on to until January 3rd, particularly 2020. So those table tents and the food court area, the videos that were on the nine screens and uh, the uh, our replacement area, all of those continued into January 3rd, 2020. As I mentioned before, the 30 second video and the table tents, which we see here. Mm -hmm. And then we're utilizing um, as much as we can that 30 second and that four length video. So this is the one of the areas where the video ran in Arbor Place Mall. This one is particularly up near um, 
What is that, Johnny Rockets? You know, the movie theater? Yeah. yeah, that's the one I should put here. So we uh, did, um, like I said, a, a, I think a really good job of the 30 second and, and how to video in connection, um, excuse me, in collaboration with uh, the um, communications department here, um, Rick Martin and his team, especially TJ. So we have these. Uh, resources, so that's carrying us into 2020 as well. That house you video is an educational resource. It wasn't just for visibility only. So not only is it um, uh, Douglasville Happenings, the website, um, uh, advocate emails, so anytime we send out an email, it's going to be that link, um, especially to communities and um, community advocates. Well, hey, I heard something about Douglas County. Um, I never ridden this bus before. Well, here you go. You don't have to listen to me. You can see how to do that. That 30 second video, um, as Gary uh, mentioned before, um, was at the Comcast stations. And it's also on Facebook and Instagram. So that message changed after the new year. It went from free rides to specifically. So anytime you click those, it's actually at the top of the Facebook page and it's running continuously. We also use, on the digital side, the uh, digital board right outside here at the courthouse. You may see the logo and then the free rides. So um, thanks to Rick and his team for um, utilizing uh, uh, county resources as much as possible to keep the visibility going. So what I want to hit on um, is what we were doing in December, but specifically touch on uh, the social media campaign. So from December 3rd, when uh, we got the green light for free rides for all of December until January 3rd, so a full month, we had a dedicated social media campaign. Those ads were targeted specifically to Douglas County Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, we geo-targeted followers, age and gender, ads that targeted 10 miles outside of Douglas County and also the state of Georgia. So the goal here was visibility, um, education, and promoting free rides. So when we say we geo-targeted, um, yes, the visibility is for the state of Georgia because, hey, look at what Douglas County is doing, but more specifically, we want you to ride for um, those who are in the area. So there were ho uh, holiday special updates targeted route information and, you know, it's easy access holiday um, shopping, use Connect Douglas, and free rides to Janu uh, until January 1. Those were the specific messages that we highlighted. So in particular, within the social media campaign, you see the numbers here. Um, it's about, it's almost 50-50, men to women. 43%, 43.39 specifically. Uh, this is this number here that you see is paid advertisements. So $64 allowed us to, to have a reach of 12,000. So we stretched our dollars significantly um, on the social media platform. 52% of men, what we call reach. And I'll explain the two in, in one moment and also impressions, almost dead even. If you can see here, 49% men, 49% women, 49.94% women specifically, 49.74% men. And what I wanted to do is just to break down the difference between the two. So the top box here, the reach are the number of people who saw the ad at least once. So if you're on your laptop, most people are on their smartphone, um, you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, Facebook in particular, you're scrolling through and you see an ad. And it's the Connect Douglas video, it's, or it's Happy Holidays picture. So the reach is the number of people who saw, it, saw the ad or message just once. Impressions, this bottom uh, chart here, are the number, the, time, the number of times the ad was on your screen. So you may have saw the ad once, clicked on it, and then just scrolled and looked at something else. You may have saw it once on your screen, and then maybe 10, 15 minutes later, you saw it again. So that's the difference between reach and impression. 
So in total, the reach we got was 25,968 that was dispersed between men and women. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, age groups 13 to 17 on the women's side was one of the highest reach. And the other, 25 to 34, was the highest reach on men. Same here, impressions. 13, this, this it, if you think about it, it makes sense. If someone's 13 to 17, they're always on the phone. They may look at an ad multiple times. That's not unheard of. <laughs> Some other uh, information I wanted to, to point out because it was a huge increase on social media. <coughs> 1,329 page engagements. So a page engagement, uh, you can see, you know, like a thumbs up, you like the page, or you double click and then you heart it, or uh, you click on a web link. Those are, you did something, that's a page engagement. In society, it's a handshake or a wave. <laughs> so there's something type of, type of engagement interaction, and that's huge, because that means people are reading, liking, not just looking, they're doing something. There's 371 post reactions. So that means um, you add to an add on the button, whether you like it, share it, love it, so or comment on it. So not only did you click on it, um, you engaged some type of way, you either made a comment or you shared it or you clicked a link, which is great. So that's one step further. And 36 people actually clicked on the link. So for example, there were website links about the 30 second video. Someone clicked on it and actually saw it. So these two pictures here are examples of the highest post reach. The free rides, this one you see here in the corner, that one um, was boosted, if you're familiar with social media, uh, on a story. So that uh, particular post on the right hand side, free rides, garnered 6,650 views. The one to the left, the generalized happy holidays, boasted 4,535 views. Some other ongoing activities, as you know, we um, continue to do lit literature drops. Um, one thing that happened prior to the holiday was Lithia Springs, they ran out. That was a good thing. Um, he said that over the course of those holiday, I went around and dropped off prior to the holiday. After the holidays, like we need some more. That was a good thing. That also garnered um, uh, conversations on who was getting them when we needed at that particular location. We needed more Spanish brochures. I think that was great. Engagement. Um, because of those conversations and being more targeted with visibility and education, those liter drop, literature drop locations were doing to restrict things as partnerships. For example, that um, just dropping off uh, more route schedules and information led to, hey, what else you got going on? There's an ESL group, um, uh, English as a Second Language group, uh, that um, Mr. Uh, Dwayne Brown over at Lithia Springs Library said that we have like 15 to 20 people. We already have an interpreter. This is a, a wonderful opportunity to do a training class. So that's what we're at, at to at this point. So we had a meeting earlier this month, and now we're in the stages of how can we best um, uh, have an opportunity to speak to uh, this group of folks and utilize Connect Douglas as a resource. If you never ridden the bus, there's a translator right there. We have Spanish uh, literature already. Let's make this happen. Um, when we were at the 150th kickoff, um, uh, just on January 16th, so we're already starting off the year pretty well with uh, engagement activities. Some things that are still um, continuing are hosted events. So from last quarter to this quarter, Strayer said, hey, we would love to have you. This is a great resource for our students. So the next set of quarterly presentations are February 3rd and 5th. We're continuing with enhanced uh, efforts with the business community. So I just had um, uh, another meeting with Breezy uh, the Douglas County Workforce Authority. Uh, 
she is, well, they in particular are ramping up for the March 11th, their industry summit, and that's going to be about transportation specifically. So working with her to have Connect Douglas um, as a present, not only fixed route, uh, fixed bus route, excuse me, but all transit options. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity to get in front of um, decision makers and um, area employers. You may have uh, remembered um, in working with the workforce development that we put out a survey. So six companies um, in particular were highly interested in transit options. So now we're at a point of next steps, scheduling meetings and getting things on the docket for those uh, six companies. So that way we can engage employers where they are and uh, utilize Connect Douglas as a wonderful resource for their employees and associates. Are there any questions or anything that I can qualify? Yeah, I'm just, just again, thank you for that update. I'm doing very um, thorough. Because I, I think we need to hear that, especially that, that social media component which sometimes um, mm -hmm. gets lost. Um, um, it, it more probably more generational, but that was something that was important to me. Um, and so my question is, okay, but how do I translate that? I get the reaches, I get the impressions, I get the frequencies. Uh, is there a correlation, direct or indirect, that ties back to um, ridership? Right? And, and it may not be able to, you may be able just to bring the awareness, but okay, I've got this awareness, and I've got ridership, right? We've got ridership stats, and I've got this. So some kind of way, I've got to be able to look at these, these statistics, and, 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 and okay, how do I translate that into effectiveness, right? I'm like, okay. So you know where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to, can you help me answer my own question? And I, I don't have an answer. I'm just asking. So I, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm hearing you correctly. How can we qualify these efforts? Quantify. Quantify yeah. these efforts. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these things were qualitative to quantitative. So um, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong. Was it 3,000 for December? Right. Ridership? When you include flights and uh, paratransit, was over 3,000. So that is one um, option where we are, are uh, linking qualitative and quantitative efforts. So we definitely did more on the social media side. And you know, we cannot do year to date because everything's still new, but we can say for the month of December, there were 3,000, um, there was 3,000 ridership. The, the numbers were board, excuse me, let me, uh, I'll link to Gary on the specific language in my ear. 3,000 boarding. You no, know, we're, we're fine. It, it wasn't a trick um, question, but it just is something I'll, I'll make a, a, a pin in it and mm -hmm. we can come back to it later, um, which is more of a, okay, I know it was free. Right? Mm -hmm. so that's an anomaly. That's a one-off, right? Right. But it's okay. But then you're also doing something new, which is um, you got two variables. you got free, and then you're doing social media that I hadn't seen so far. So you amplify the moment, amplify right? It. Okay, Correct. boom. All right, so now it's got to restabilize going forward. I'm, I'm good. But um, I'm just curious to see, you know, mm -hmm. what, what's driving people's awareness. And, and, and again, I want to see, does my ridership now go up in February? Now that we're, you know, we'll, well next year we're here, I just, I'm mm -hmm. curious to see how this works. So we won't know, it's not, we don't have enough data points. Um, obviously, you need um, more data points per month to see how uh, this happens. But I want to try to get to that correlation between what I spend on, you know, what we spend our efforts on marketing, versus what we get as results of boardings, right? right. If there is a correlation, it's just, you, you, there's a tie. We'll solve it there. I'm uh, I can offer Please, we got some, some commentary on that. It's not specific to your question, but statistically through the Atlanta Regional Commission, yeah. whenever you expose a new transit rider, get them to use transit one time, mm -hmm. Statistically, 28% continue to use the system. Mm -hmm. So that goes to your question partially. Yes, it does. Make a note of that. We'll come back to it later. We'll see if you remember what he said. Okay. No, we're good. <laughs> no, no, no tough questions. Any, anybody else? We want to keep I, going. I just have here? Come, yes, um, ma'am. Our, our system is just all just relatively. Is it all relative about 180 days? Is that what we're looking at now? Is it six months old? How old is it? Through through December, we had we operated 
163 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying, okay, 160. Oh, yeah, 163 days. So we've got quite six months old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking good. Okay, well, that's all good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else questions? Jamal, you want to weigh in or anything? Uh, no, sir, no oh, I have one question. Oh, okay. Let's stop to there. Have a the, the nice big bus. No, no, no. Oh, we just stops. approved those. And yes, stops. correct. Mm -hmm. Well, what was the answer on the bus stops? Oh, have they been placed up yet? They have not been placed up yet. Mm -hmm. we, we've chosen a, a vendor to produce the signs, and then we're waiting to have the purchase order issued. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Anything else? All right. Great. Can I make sure you okay with the update? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good update, though. Good, good, good insight. All right. Miguel? All right, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. The second item, uh, also from Transit Services, I'll yes. pass it on to Gary for a fixed route operating ridership update. Yep. We wanted to give you an update on what we did from our launch on June the 20th through yes. December 31st. And this yep. is this is to see for that information is on. And during that, that period, uh, we had a total of all boardings of 16,399. We were in service 163 days, so that means we had an average boarding per, boarding per day of 101. Uh, December was our best, best <laughs> month. Uh, from, from November to December, we had a, a jump of 27 uh, average riders per day we went from 92 to 119 from november to december mm -hmm. so that we felt like that was was really good uh, route 40 continues to be our strongest route mm -hmm. followed by route 20 then route 10 and then route 30. Uh, our our busiest day of the week is friday uh, followed closely by well the rest of the days of the week basically itself saturday and one interesting uh, aspect is where most of our boardings are. And you can see where the, the top boardings have been at the Transportation Center, the Thornton Road Walmart, West Douglas Park and Ride Lot, the Mall, the Douglas Walmart in the Avalon, the Daughtry Circle uh, in North Douglasville. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jamal put some statistics for us the other day, and it was really interesting that we've had ridership people to be picked up or dropped off at every stop we've got okay. in the county some are obviously stronger than other others but but people are are realizing where their stops are and they're taking advantage mm -hmm. um, once you get the, the more <laughs> visible signs it'll help reinforce yes. what was already in place yes. okay. mm -hmm. and this this is I, I promised the full board of commissioners that I would give them an update, and so this this information plus a little more is what I want to to give the full board at the, the first meeting in February. Mm -hmm. okay. Work session. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sounds good. Mark. Mark. Okay. Hmm? Work session. First meeting. Sorry. Yeah, he'll put it on the agenda. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no. No, sure. You're doing more inquiry. Yeah. That's so exciting. So, so we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, I, I get some good stuff here. Um, this is kind of kind of, yeah, go, I like the tool. Go ahead, I'm sure. Yeah. We talked about, are you still entertaining and changing the routes? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma mm -hmm. And the, the procedure we're following on that, of course, we presented the, the proposed changes to the Transportation Committee a meeting or two ago. Uh, we have meetings set up uh, on February the 3rd with each of the other three the individual commissioners where we're going to explain that, uh, the proposed changes to them. And then once we present that to the commissioners, we're going to have community meetings and Danielle is helping us uh, arrange the times and dates for those. And so we'll take the feedback from the commissioners and uh, the public and finalize uh, the changes in the routes, and then uh, we'll come back to the full board of commissioners for their approval mm -hmm. of the changes. So change it. And then, that, is it, do we go to the FTA for this, or do we just keep the local board of commissioners? It's local. It's local. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Chris, do you have an idea what the impact would be for the, the routes that you are changing to the ones that are existing? Would it be one? Well, we, the, the one that we feel like there might be a significant change to is, is Route 40. And that's, that's the route that we're taking off the interstate. And we're, and we're running it down Fairburn Road south to Lee Road. Just probably mm -hmm. pick up some more rivals. Yes, ma'am. Basically, just get on. Yes, but it's not, you're not making a drastic change. You're just coming off the freeway and you still get exactly. all those pockets you were getting the yeah. ball. And, and that'll serve us in two ways. Number one, it'll get us off the, the expressway and the chance of running into traffic issues, which happens all the time. Yes. And then secondly, by going down Fairburn Road and across Lee Road, it does give us an opportunity to collect some more riders. Right. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, to, to that point, but we also talked about the, the third, which was, um, you know, one is obviously, what Commissioner Walker said, you know, why we, you know, that was the, the aha to join the number 30 that you guys were involved in to get off the highway, right? This is what was going down there. So I get while we're doing the four you make the move around. But um, also an operational approval with number 30, which is to loop around the hotels. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the hotels are on board. They recognize. Now, what does that mean? We're, just, we're not going inside the hotels. We're just going along the street, right? Is that true or what? Just, well, we're, we're wanting to start 30 actually at the Hilton Garden. You know, and we need to have some more discussions with them. But, but basically, the, they'll loop around <coughs> Interstate West. Uh, to catch those hotels and then go back to the Walmart where it started now. So not not a drastic change in that route. Okay, so we're going to start at the Hilton. What we're going to do, go Where we're going from the Hilton? Back around the U? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're not going to go into the Walmart? Yes, we're still going to go to the Walmart. Apple going to the Walmart. Yes, sir. Then you come out, go at the light, go across the street. Yes, sir. Hotel, loop around. Yes. Then, and yeah. take it right on door and going back to toward Riverside. Right. Okay. So, but you will start, you will stop at Walmart. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. I'm like, okay, how will you connect? Because you want to make people walk? No, no, not really. We're still going to make that connection. Right. Right. That's what I was losing. It's like, yes, okay, wait a minute now. Don't make them walk all the way around there. Okay, got it. I'm good. Yes, Thank you. Yeah, and as, as you can see in the statistics, <coughs> the Thornton Road Walmart is our second mm -hmm. most active pick right. up and drop off location. Yeah, I'm well, I just didn't hear it right. You got it. You got it. You guys have got it. You worked it out. Um, so how did it? Right. So, but the number forty, when it comes out, um, you take you know when the forty come off the highway, coming back, it goes to the episode. Right, it goes down the hill, Six Flags. Yeah, it'll still have to go on the expressway that short, short time from all the way back up the door road. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have it. Ain't that brutal? How's that that down? That's brutal. I get it. That's a lot of traffic. That's a long, that's a lot of traffic guys between those two. You guys know it. That you know, I live there. That's a lot of traffic coming up over that hill. There's probably no no better way around it other than get off at the riverside and cutting through and coming out by the sheriff's mm -hmm. um, satellite office. I'm talking out loud, I'm not you know designing like this. Mm -hmm. That 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 adds a lot of some some extra time and some extra uh, distance if you would do that. We, we've we actually yeah. looked, looked, looked at that and, and felt like it wasn't a, a viable alternative. If I get up the highway at, at, at the road, I'm going right. You got RVs, you got the, the plaza, and then you're going to get to Blair Bridge. So, barring that right there, or even if you came back around where we got the, uh, the dentistry and the, um, where our Parking ride is. Even if you came along there, I'll, I'll go back around. How, how, how is that not better just to cut across up Riverside? You just go straight up Riverside. You got one light right there at the crossover, back to Shoals. You're going down to Mother Lucy. You're going down to the stoplight. You get the next light. It's Thornton. How? So you tell me that it's faster and better to go straight up all that traffic. How, have y'all run this? No, not, not in that route that, you, that, you, that you're talking about. So we sit like Mr. Gary said, say I have to go back, look at it, and just try to weigh the options still before we take the bus up there, get the buy-in of the public. That's just start making that change. 
we give them scenario and options, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's just like for me, I've got that epiphany note, you know, y'all can actually stop at the epicenter, right? So sometimes the public will give you input or something you think about. Yes. I'm not sure. That's the no forward going after the public to see what they got to say about it. Right. All right. All right. Anything else? Mark, time to make sure? No, sir. We're good. Good deal, please, director. All right. Keep next, next time. Thanks, guys. Yep. Next item on the agenda is also for the transit services, uh, construction of transportation center change order. This, this change order involves the, the small area between the south end of the new addition and our upper parking lot. And what we found out is we need to extend uh, the retention wall that's going around the, the new addition uh, to, uh, otherwise we're going to have some, some serious potential flooding mm -hmm. and erosion uh, problems. Uh, the change order is, would be a, uh, an extra $17,363, which which we can come up with. Uh, we had some some extra money left in the 2019 uh, budget for the uh, the construction of the addition, and I asked Jennifer Holland to roll that money over in 2020 so we could uh, could use it. And and the way this all came about is that of course the uh, the contractor was doing the construction. Um, by a set of plans and when they started the actual construction they found out that the uh, that the original as-built plans of, of the initial transportation transportation center were three feet off and if they they built according to that those original plans that's where the issue with the, the, the erosion and the uh, flooding uh, was going to come about uh, so uh, the architect looked at it, uh, the contractor looked at it, and also uh, James Worthington uh, from our Developmental Services Department has, has looked at it, mm -hmm. and James gave us uh, the, uh, uh, well not the authorization, but he asked us to proceed with uh, having the retention wall uh, extended. Mm -hmm. A couple questions. Who is the architect on that? Um, the architect of the the original transportation center where where the error was made was uh, Stantec. Stantec, and who's the current architect? Uh, Carter Watkins. Carter Watkins, mm -hmm. and who's the current construction? Mm -hmm. Construction mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So, so the new architects found. We got in here in some kind of way. We realized something. So it could be. Yes. All right. So, uh, and so this is a seventeen thousand dollar error. It's not necessarily an error. <coughs> We're just correcting something that's going to be a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, what happens when you have flawed design plans? Should, should, should we not go back to the original architect? Like, okay, how does that work? Or is it, was it us that signed off on those plans? How does that work? And I don't know. This is y'all work now. I'm just asking a question. Well, we would, you know, we would have accepted the as built. Yes. As built. Can I make sure that I would? We just, but the plans is what we bought, right? We bought some yeah, plans. Yeah, but they would stamp the as built. So they're still required to say, okay, yes, these are correct. Because none of our staff would have any way of knowing what the elevations were that right. they put on there without going out there and shooting. Right. So yeah. stuff like that, we have to rely on the stamp of the architect. Right, which we got into the, the AIA, what is it called, the, 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 the formal certification. Mm -hmm. um, is there any recovery we get on that? Because there's a lot more active broad plans. It, it matters. Yeah, well, this was more than 15 years ago. Is there a statute of function? I, I just... Can we just ask the answer to kind of mystery? Can we just find an answer to that? And yeah, I'll have to talk to Ken and see yeah. what. Mm -hmm. I just want to find out what the answer would be. Not that I'm looking for any, I'm not looking for any action. Right. I just want to know the answer so it's going to cost us in the future. But I have no problem with um, 
moving forward, we gotta move forward. Mm -hmm. Just make sure we get it right because obviously we don't need any flooding and all the things that come forward with that. So, um, Director Valentin, can I get a motion to uh, make recommendations to the full board of commissioners for this? Or are we looking for, what are we looking for? Can we do this within our budget? And can we just move, Mark? Uh, we, well, as I said, we, we've got the money that, that we can do it with. It's 80% reimbursable uh, from the FTA. I just, just need a uh, recommendation or concurrence from the committee to bring it before the full board of commissioners. When we make a note, what is our rule? What do we have in place that says, when do we go to the full board versus when do we don't? And if we don't have it, we need to codify it. That's what we're going to try to get well, This is a contract, so it's a change order to it's an actual contract. existing contract that was approved by the board of commissioners. So, so yes. we're amending it. We're, yes. we're expanding it beyond the amount that it was. Mm -hmm. It was not their fault, and so then we must acknowledge it. Sort of like what yeah, more like right. So in this case, it would have to go to the board. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay, I make a motion that we uh, recommend to the full board to uh, approve a change order to the co uh, construction contract of Henry Construction for the Transportation Center addition in the amount of 173363 14. 17,363 and 83 and 14. 363, 17363 14. 173, okay. This is shown 383. Okay. Well, we've got 63 here, so that's yeah, 83. Yeah. 3, 17, 383, 14. You get that from the record, honey, this year? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Second. All right, we got a motion and a second from Mr. Watkins. Any further discussion? All right, we got a motion and a second. Everybody raise your hands and say aye. Who are in favor of this? Aye. Right. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Mm -hmm. Motion passed. <coughs> All right, thank you. Yep, keep thank moving. Thank you, Chairman. Next item on the agenda, also for transit services, a yep. report on FTA grant application for second year funding for bus operations. Chair? We're on track with this. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration has flexed the CMAC funds over to FTA, yeah. which means we can move forward um, with our application. And so what I need to do now is at the uh, February 4th meeting of the Board of Commissioners, I need to uh, ask for permission to have a, a public hearing at the February 18th uh, Board of Commissioners meeting about the, the application. Yes. And then at that same meeting, after we have the, the public hearing, if I can uh, get the uh, Board of Commissioners uh, to give me authorization to move forward with the application. Mm -hmm. This application will be basically the same uh, as the first year. We'll be asking for $1.6 million in federal money mm -hmm. with a $400,000 local match. Mm -hmm. And that will, uh, that will kick in when the current contract with a third party provider is over uh, on May the 7th. Is that, is that the general mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the congestion indication? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I, to, to the point, and so this is a process we've gone through last year. This is the second year. Um, we do need to get ahead because we're going to do it in February. We come up in 90 days. We need to be able to do this without any exposure to our digest and that we're able to focus, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I say we move forward. So can we get a motion? Make a motion we proceed with the application process as stated. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any further discussion? Miguel, you okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Keep the process going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any votes? Motion carries. All right. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Chapel Hill Four Intersection Project. Uh, we discussed this at the meeting in December. And just to kind of go over the basic, uh, just as a refresher, uh, initially, the design was intended to add a, a turn lane, so it would go from two lanes to three. Mm -hmm. We, uh, once we got underway, uh, 
recognize that there were sidewalks that were intended to be built along the road, added those to the design. So uh, that was what the designer was proceeding with. That was the basis for what they were developing. And um, there was some discussion about should we um, go ahead as we are acquiring right of way and easements for the extra one lane expansion, consider adding uh, the other two lanes so that when we go to acquire the, the right of way, we do it for the future condition mm -hmm. of the five lane configuration, which is what is scheduled for the road in the future. As a result of discussions, one design concept versus the other, we, uh, in committee last year also, had discussions about, well, what would the cost be? What is the cost implication of adding the additional right-of-way, and how does that tie in with our budget? Uh, we went back to the consultant and asked them to take a look at the additional impact of the right-of-way acquisition for the full five lanes and the design as well. And they came back to us and said, essentially because the existing right-of-way uh, along the road is substantial enough, they, they can design a five-lane configuration uh, without very much additional right-of-way, as well as a three-lane, uh, but there would be no substantial increase in the actual physical right-of-way that would need to be acquired between each of those concepts. Where the, different, where the difference is slightly greater is in easements. Mm -hmm. uh, we would need slightly less than one acre of additional easements uh, for the three-lane configuration and slightly less than one and a half acres uh, for the full build-out. So the difference between those two, uh, between the two configurations, three lane versus five lane, essentially from a right of way acquisition standpoint, boils down to a little less than half an acre of additional uh, easements that would be required. Yeah. Now, we have not costed out, because we're not to that uh, point in the design yet, how much that would be uh, based on what other projects of this nature uh, would entail, or, you know, we may be looking at a quarter million to three hundred thousand range for that right of way acquisition. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's the cost implications as it relates to the additional right of way. As the designer was looking at the actual design, they came back to us and said, "Well." We have looked at both of these configurations and costed out what it would cost to build. Their estimate to build the three-lane configuration is slightly less than 2.5 million, mm -hmm. and the cost to build the full five-lane widening is slightly over three million. So a difference of 612,000. Mm -hmm. Now, if we did just a three-lane configuration at this time and, and deferred all other widening for the future, when we go to do the expansion to the five-lane, we're looking at a, an incremental cost of slightly over one and a half million. So essentially what, um, what we're looking at is a situation where if you make the decision to design the full build-out now, you need to, uh, to uh, you'd be incurring an additional 612,000, but you would be saving or, uh, slightly over 900,000 in the long term. So that is uh, the discussion that we've had over the last several months and uh, perhaps going back into the last year initially. And um, at the last meeting, there was a, a request that I reach out to the commissioner <coughs> of that district to uh, apprise her of these um, circumstances and get her input. I have done that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, obviously she is here as well, but uh, can, can raise your hand and wave if I'm saying something that is not uh, 
not uh, per our discussions, but uh, the feedback that I obtained was that, that we should pursue doing the full uh, five-lane build-out if, if the funding can be identified. And um, so that is where we are. The, the next step would be if there is consensus uh, from the committee and, and the board uh, to go back to the design consultant and say, tell them, here is where we want you to go. Instead of a three-lane configuration, um, go ahead and design the plans for the full five-lane widening. The advantage of that, as we've talked about, is incremental savings, but also peripherally, if not uh, of major consequence, is that the disturbance will occur once, and that section, slightly less than a mile long, would be done uh, at one time, and uh, you would not have to go back and, uh, and do anything there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And, and, and again, I'll, I'll acknowledge Madam Carthen from 3rd District. Madam Carthen, uh, again, while you can't go, any of us can attend member, uh, committee member meetings. Would you like to come for the record since we're taping up again? I'd like to hear the input from your citizens. I mean, I just, for the record, sure, would you like to? Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to know what Miguel has heard. Oh, he's the input. Yeah, come down. Sit and take him down here. With my family. So, in um, March of this year, March of 2019, I had my first town hall, and at that town hall, we had quite a significant amount of constituents that came out. And the major concern that uh, DOT and I heard was the congestion on Chapel Hill Road. Uh, that congestion is significant. But what I also heard, which was really um, shocking to me, was that constituents had been under the impression that Chapel Hill Road would be widened all the way back to the 1970s, early 80s. So we're talking about over 40 years of that not happening. And so, of course, we had a lot of pent-up frustration, uh, along with the congestion, as to why that had not happened. Also, they wanted sidewalks, because a lot of the kids who do go back and forth to school were having to step in the mud and other things. Uh, they were just not happy about it. So they felt as if they had been overlooked because a lot of the other work in the county has been done, but nothing to check on the road. So when um, Director um, Valentin came to me and gave me the scope of work and what it would cost, I thought that it was more than reasonable for us to consider uh, expanding the scope of work so that the future for Chapel Hill Road would be what the constituents have so long desired and so that we desperately need. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation as a record because I would, <coughs> for me, um, at coming in um, 10 years ago, um, when you talk about character areas, and I, I appreciate the, the general perspective of District 3, uh, the all that connected water, you know, I, I get it, I, I feel it. But also heard um, regarding Chapel Hill is that now I'm hearing um, uh, a, a, a divestiture from perhaps a conservative approach to Chapel Hill versus progressive. Because what, what I really heard, I've always seen Highway 5 and always seen Fair Road. There was always this perspective that the Chapel Hill, you know, we want to keep it quaint, intimate, slow road, you know, it, but yet what I'm, I'm hearing is that, that there's it, 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 there's, a, there's a falsity to that because in essence if there's really truly pent up demand we're, you know, we're behind we should have been way further along than that so it just never got looked at because there's, there's no reason that Chapel Hill could not have been addressed by now in the current plans and so I'm just talking out loud is that true? I mean, That's very true um, we heard a lot of constituents talk about the amount of subdivisions that have been built on Chapel Hill and close to Chapel Hill. And of course, everyone who comes onto that road is the main thoroughfare to get to by 20. And so, with that amount of subdivisions and homes and families traveling that road, the congestion is an overwhelming. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's all I want to ask. It's, it's not an inquiry. It was just more of a, mm -hmm. since you were here, for the record, you can put that up. I, 
I thank you for your comment. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Director Bellamy. Keep on. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, as it relates to this particular item, uh, the, the next step would be if there's consensus from from the board that that uh, this is where we want to go, and how we want to proceed would be to direct the design consultant to begin the process of of developing that particular design, mm -hmm. with the understanding that uh, when we come back to bid the project that there will be an incremental cost and during the acquisition of right of way there's also going to be a, um, a cost that it's not necessarily um, very significantly incrementally but that uh, to now had not been quantified. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's a, I'm sensitive to <coughs> and again just me I, I'm sensitive to that area um, you know, sometimes we do get you know, just not a story. I'm not going to say that there was uh, intent, but uh, it seems like there's a justification for this being a priority. Um, and so since you're already in there, as they say, um, this, this, uh, I would not um, oppose supporting, at least on the design phase. Now you have to come back around at the end. There's a bigger funding plan, right, that we need to make sure we, we, this is all part of it. So. Um, Madam Chair, uh, or to the full committee, I have no problem in supporting a motion to move forward with just that component of design, acknowledging that we'll have to deal with the variance later. True? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Administrator, did, and I, I just said that openly. Would you catch that kind of administrator? Yes, sir. We're acknowledging it, mm -hmm. as is. We know there's just going to be a difference later, but we'll deal with that later. But we at least want to get it on the record to acknowledge District 3. In there, um, that they are reporting and they have been heard. Yes, yeah. right. And part is lost. Mm -hmm. is Correct. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We might okay. not digest, are we? No. no. I know that. Like, I'm, I'm being funny. Yeah. Like, no, we're no. this is no. 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 That was that was it. Like, okay, now. Mm -hmm. All right, we're fair enough. So, can I get a motion? So, so. Sorry. <coughs> and a motion and second. Uh, ask them to move forward with this. They tell the design consultants to move forward on the Chapel Hill corridor. As stated, correct? Correct. All right, and that's the five lane? Five lane configuration. Five lane configuration. Um, did you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, Re acknowledging that there'll be a variance later that we as a committee will have to, uh, will address and bring back to the full board. Right. Just had a question regarding this. Yes. Oh, yeah. We, 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 yep. right. we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? There we go. Uh, just getting an idea of timeline. How long does it take? Will it take for the design? How long does it use to take that design? The, the design has been underway for quite a while. Uh, in fact, because of what we asked them to do the comparison, they have already analyzed what it would take. So, so they're they're already oh, done yeah. some effort along those lines. My my expectation would be the design would be complete towards the end of this year. And how many miles is this? This is slightly less than a mile. Well, this particular project is slightly less than a mile. All right, so, okay, well, look for the record for the, all right, so from where to where? Is it Soaring Drive? It's from Soaring Drive to High Country. Yeah. Okay, so it's not really far. Okay. So the, going to convert the five and then shrink back down? It would shrink back down. Oh, okay. But it would be it would be striped um, for three lanes until the other two lanes are needed. I know what you think. All the way. All the way. But we're good. We just we want to make sure. But, 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 but to that point, we then we move forward. Did, did, I, I mean, more definitive regarding that. Then mm -hmm. if it's just okay. Let's show progress. Let's move it on. Mm -hmm. No different than, than Lee Row. You only can do a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And so let's let's do with that. So uh, we've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries as stated. All right. <coughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Next item on the agenda. Actually, several items are mostly updates, but yep. uh, mm -hmm. the county certification to administer federally funded transportation project. Uh, that is a, a formal process through the Atlanta, uh, through the Georgia Department of Transportation, uh, where they analyze the, the um, 
uh, plans, the staffing, mm -hmm. the processes and procedures that the county has followed to make sure that they comply with federal regulations. Uh, we submitted an application and uh, the, the DOT has analyzed our application. They have come back with some minor um, changes that they want us to incorporate into our purchasing policy. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, they have found our processes uh, over the last three years to have been satisfactory and they have certified the county for the next three years. Okay. So we're certified. Um, will you be able to share that um, perhaps um, in our next person see yes. um, mm -hmm. what those um, suggested improvements can be? Yes, and I've, uh, I have a meeting, in fact, tomorrow with the purchasing department to go over the details, but I'll be happy to attend. Very good, thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just to consistency. Okay. Certainly. All right. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, just a brief update on the uh, on call for consultants, the review update. the. Uh, the consultant who's reviewing the RFQ submittals has indicated that they have completed phase one and mm -hmm. they're bringing the results in. We have a meeting set up with them tomorrow uh, in the purchasing department to to get those uh, uh, the rankings and then um, there will be a second phase of that and then once the second phase is concluded uh, we will have the recommendations to, to the committee. just wanted to give you an update as to where we are. Not this committee, but the purchasing committee, right? Who are you bringing? Are you going to the purchasing department? Uh, the purchasing department is, is uh, for for purposes of interact interaction with the, with the consultant who's doing their review. But it, no, I'm not going to the committee yet. The uh, My first uh, report to committee would be to this committee. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I did have an update, a little word update for this person, like, okay, um, so he's almost ready. They're ready with phase one. Mm -hmm. So we, we will have to then engage in phase two. Mm -hmm. And that is a narrowing of, uh, so, so to, to give you um, an example, let's say that there were 10 firms that submitted for one category. Mm -hmm. Then the county can decide to uh, go to phase two, which is the remainder of the process uh, to get the, their responses to phase two. We could reach out to five of those. The, the, federal, uh, the federal guideline is that when you go to phase two, you're dealing with three to five. So, so if you have 15 or 20 that bid, you're narrowing it to three to five. Uh, there is no absolute restriction that it needs to be five, but that is sort of balance. So I'm going to give you um, in a, a meeting earlier. This is just hypothetical really for the county administrator to hear. So um, we're, we're, and obviously we're talking um, these standby engineers are not just for horizontal, they can be for vertical as well. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement that these engineers that she reached out for what, what, right, is, I'm going to use inspection as a, as a relative, but, but a real example, uh, inspection of a building. Um, I'm going to say a concession stand or a restaurant, uh, or a community center, or a senior center. And with, with, with we pull from this list an inspector um, that would oversee our architectural plans or the building itself. And again, I don't get into verticals. This is not my world, but. Are we pulling from that to do that, or what? The, 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 the way the request for qualifications was composed, it was intended for horizontal construction only, not very. Now, right. there, is a, there is a horizontal component to every site that has vertical. So theoretically, you could use them for a limited scope in a vertical project, but not for the actual architectural inspection because the certifications through the Georgia DOT is different for that type of construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. All right, so I'm, I'm going to, and I know, again, this is where we're having conversation with. Mm -hmm. All we think is 
for Zaos because again, for the most part, we don't build stuff, right? We're not like city of Denver, you were, I remember I was talking to the prior county administrator, we like, a number of verticals, none of the verticals. That's all they build, and the verticals. Out here, it's all horizontal, so I understand. Um, and, and so I, I, I think by the fall, we stand by engineers, I don't think we, we, we limited to you. Le there was no limitation for horizontal only. It was really just having standby engineers really for anything that was necessary. I don't think that we constrained it, but, but duly noted, you're saying that this group is primarily horizontal. So I've got to stop short of that to say, kind of sure we need to have an offline conversation on vertical inspections and how we want to do that. We want to solve it now, mm -hmm. but, okay. but it came up in a prior meeting regarding um, these verticals. Let's just take it there. Okay. 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 Well, I think it's a perfect time based on that meeting with that. Yeah, we'll catch you later. Yeah, yeah, we'll catch you later. All right, so there's nothing we can do right now. All right, because it's not part of the list. All right, so Miguel, you're good. So okay, very we'll good. get an update and we'll, we'll keep this posted. All right, keep going. Right. Thank you. Next item on the agenda uh, is the bridge inspection report. I'm not going to get into a lot of details at this point. I will bring this as an action item before the committee later this year. Uh, perhaps in the spring, but um, is it possible? No, this is this is actually for all bridges. All bridges. Uh, all bridges. Uh, as as a, a bit of background, how many bridges do we have? We have uh, uh, fifty-two that I saw on the list. All right. Now there might be some that are missing action, but are not mm -hmm. on the list. But the list that I recall seeing had mm -hmm. fifty-two, uh, so it's in that in that range that will work. Uh, but uh, as you know, every couple of years, uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation will actually do a physical inspection of the condition of the bridges mm -hmm. and provide a report to the county. Yes. And it is the, then the county's responsibility to see that those deficiencies identified are corrected. Yes. Uh, out of 52 bridges, they, they typically <coughs> find, and in this case, in fact, found, uh, uh, little things here and there that need to be addressed. Uh, they're not major structural issues, yep. uh, but some of them are structural in nature that if not addressed early on, could become worse and become mm -hmm. um, major structural issues. So uh, what I intend to do is once we have the um, on-call design consultants for horizontal work, uh, to have them, uh, particularly the ones that, that are for bridges, to have one of them um, take a look at the list of items and give us a, a scope of what it would take to address all of those things. Uh, uh, I've, I've done that previously, uh, rather than piecemeal and it lumped together the entire package. And uh, there is the possibility if we hit the cycle uh, at the right time to apply for a federal grant to actually address these. Yeah. So we may be looking at, uh, once we package it as a project, yep. as a maintenance project, we might be looking at the, the local match only as opposed to the entire thing. Okay. So that, just wanted to give as you an update on that. But there's something we always have to keep our eyes on. Mm -hmm. um, keep going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing with that. Uh, in terms, next item on the agenda is uh, Highway 5 and State Route 66 roundabout. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a, a number of complaints, as you all know, related to uh, lighting at that location and, and other things. And um, I've reached out to, and I'm sure others have as well, reached out to the Georgia DOT and they have now come back and, and committed to addressing the light. Mm -hmm. So they will be engaging a design consultant to develop the design. Mm -hmm. The county has a standing agreement with them <coughs> for us to pick up the tab on the power bill once the lighting is implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is a retrofit, initially was intended for them to look at it during the design process. They may have and, and deferred it, uh, but now they, they've agreed to go back and retrofit and, and add the lighting 
uh, with the understanding that we will honor the um, agreement that we have to pick up the, the utilities. Uh, we will get more detail on that as they go further along in the design. The expectation is that they are expediting this and that uh, by the end of this year the lighting will be uh, under the circle. Okay. Okay. So. That'll pick up the entire 166 quarter you know, all the, the, no, this would be just, just right at the roundabout. Yes, it but it's a good start, uh, Chairman. It, it's a, yeah. It's a good start. Well, Mark, you're working with some lights today, are you too, right? Yeah, so I'm trying to get some information from Greystone on 166. Okay, I'm just trying to yeah. Yeah. bracket because this is yeah. at the far end. This will bracket right. that at that other end. Yeah. So, so, so that's what we're doing. All right. And uh, so that, that, the next item on the agenda really, it, what on the agenda, but um, it falls under other items, which is item number seven on the agenda. Yep. And that is, we have an application. Well, now, let me give you a little background. All utilities, most utilities, almost all utilities, uh, whenever there's going to be construction in an area, there is a centralized repository of information where people will call contractors who provide notice that somebody intends to do construction and for them to notify all of the utilities to come out and mark where the utilities are. Yeah. We had a situation recently where the contractor obtained a permit to do, well, at least they, they tell us that there is a permit issued by the city and they, in the process, damaged our fiber optic that controls the traffic signals along Chapel Hill Road. I say controls, it doesn't really control the signals. It allows us to interact remotely with the signals. Uh, so the you know, signals are operating, yes, Chapel Hill Road, but I see that that got your attention. But uh, so we, we had access to, we, we would be able, from the Transportation um, Traffic Control Center, we would be able to pull up the information for those signals and actually change the timing and make adjustments or see how it's operating. Uh, we've lost that ability because of, of the contractor who hit our facility. And um, as we went through figuring out how or why it happened, it came to our attention that the county had not previously gotten registered with 811. And so we were not notified whenever the contractors were working out there. Now, how or why that happened, um, we'll leave that to history, but I don't, I, I, my recommendation is that we go through the process and get us listed with that system so that we don't have any breaks in the future, or at least who runs eight one one? It's a state a sponsored. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, statewide and a centralized. Uh, and how long has the eight one one been in place? Oh, probably I'm going to say a dozen years at least. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, a long time. Mm -hmm. right, so uh, but but the utilities have to register, and so the application uh, is something that it is a contract because okay. because we have to pay dues periodically. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but What's the, What's the, the, the impact the initial application is around $200 and then annually it might be 100, 150 in that range. So it's not a, a major impact, but it's just because it is a contract, it has to go to the full board and thus I bring it to the committee for a recommendation to send it to the full board for action. Do you know all contracts have come for the board? But the dollar amount is such that it is it's an county administrator like this. It, it's to the side, it's more of our own internal, but just make a note that, like, really? I mean, I get it, but, but the county administrator it has sufficient authority in and of itself. So if it falls within our internal controls of $50,000 or less, it's administrative. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's operational. And it's, but do we know that? It's not the way it is today, or at least it's great, so we'll bring it to the board We're good. I'm sure I have no problem with this. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I'm just surprised that they haven't been done yet. 
why those uh, those utilities in other that those big utilities in other places haven't said why aren't y'all registered this or mm -hmm. I mean it's just sort of like it's not your issue. Is it the same reason? organization? It's more of us. Yeah. Is it the same organization? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's history. I contacted when we were admitted to potentially put down the yes. bus stop. Yes. Call but before you dig. Yeah, call Thank before you. you dig. It used to be called call before you dig. Now it's yeah. 811. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I talked to the general manager. Okay, so. Yeah. So far, he didn't tell me you weren't registered when I talked to him. But in the meeting? Yeah. But to that point, I mean, all the. Let that go. Anything else? That's all I have. All right, I've got, I just got one more item that I just, um, just for the record, um, it, it's something we talked about at the budget retreat, which is something to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. um, um, getting our minds around um, um, long term capital and funding plans for uh, transportation. Have you had a chance to meet with Chris Pumphrey or County Commissioner? Have, County Commissioner, have you given me guidance to to that that request by the full no, board? Um, not yet. No, so we have the information. I think we're working in the process of working through David Corbett. David Corbett. Very good. Yeah, we've got a couple more. Jennifer and I actually have a couple of things to add, but we've already discussed those. Mm -hmm. But um, and I think she's working on setting up a meeting, maybe with David or David's review. But right now, I have to check back and see what the status of that is. But Okay. We're getting closer. Right. Yes, but, but to your point, I have met with Chris Pumphreys before I finalized okay. the list and mm -hmm. sent it over. So both have weighed in. Mm -hmm. So both Chris and Miguel have weighed in from an infrastructure perspective. Yeah, the first so I don't think Chris had any comments as far as emails to us. He may have his had with yeah, discussions. I incorporated with his comments okay. into my... Uh, yeah, so yes, that's correct. Right. As much as I wanted to say at this moment. Okay. So we know it's coming on the other side. That's what I'm hearing. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Now, that was all. I just want to do the record that we are talking about um, more clarity on funding. Things that are, we've got the SPLOS, but then you have broader uh, mm -hmm. funding needs. Now, Chair, we just want to put on the record that we do acknowledge it that's running independent of the SPLOS that's popping up. That's all. Miguel, you want anything else in there? No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. If there's nothing else, Madam Chair. One other yes. thing. Yes. Post road bridge. You know, there's some uh, separating. What do we call it, Mark? Cracking, separating. Yeah, that's some bridge joints. Construction joints. Construction joints. How, how are we coming with that? That is being addressed by by Gina. Gina. Yes. And I have we started on Liberty, the Liberty Road bridge. Yeah. I'm thinking of there's seven bridges that we were addressing this um, year. Have we started? What's this? And I know Pulse was first. I'm not sure. Liberty, no, Liberty I, I don't believe that was, there were six bridges as part of one contract. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Liberty was as part of that contract. And Post Road was the only one in the county. Now there were others that were part of a different contract uh, that were Liberty or Right one. Is, is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, can yeah, follow, I, I can check. But I think that since that falls within the C limits of the river. We wouldn't really give you any updates on that. Yeah. I can follow up and see what the situation there is, but but as far as um, our exposure, uh, there there were some bridges under one contract that had some cosmetic work to be done to them. Yeah, uh, the Bright Star like Road, Hilton. Mm -hmm. But yes, I do remember it was in when we met with the city of Del mm -hmm. so. GDOT had said they weren't doing post and Liberty at the same time because it would cause so many issues. So okay. yes, Liberty should be coming after post according to what City of Bill Ricker told us mm -hmm. six or eight months ago. Okay. Okay. Um, that's all. All right. Anybody else? Can I miss sure? No, sir. We're good. Director Watson. Just a quick update. Yeah. Uh, the contract with the third party operator for the bus service expires in early May. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually start negotiations with them tomorrow. Uh, looking forward uh, to uh, putting together a contract for their second year. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at their budget for this current year, how they're doing with it, what they're doing with it. We're going to be making some recommendations on the budget for this upcoming year uh, we want we want to put some more teeth in their performance uh, evaluators in the contract so 
over the next two or three months, we'll be working on that. And of course, when the time comes, we'll bring a contract recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. No, I appreciate that. And that goes parallel, obviously, for the FTA, um, for the funding as well, yes, right? Sir. So mm -hmm. that, that makes sense because that's what's taking care of it. To, to that point, um, yes, you, you, you know, right, let's, let's see if it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're good, don't need to belabor it. Uh, uh, and again, it's not in a, in a bad sense, but we want to make sure what is our value exchange, right? Okay, so we don't, um, you know, back to, we had no standard, we had an expectation. Now we've got almost a full year of a standard, right? So now you can begin to measure exactly. if that makes sense. So yes, right. I'm not getting ahead of the process. So let's, um, we, we, we've got some early feedback on some things that we'd like to see improvement on. So we'll just address that. We're not trying to recreate a, a more perfect model. We'll just take the feedback we got. So, you got it. <laughs> Director Valentin, you okay? I'm good. Anybody else? I'm fine, sir. Thank you. Everybody else? Yes, sir. All right. All right. So, if there's nothing else to come before this um, transportation committee, let this meeting stand adjourned. Okay.